I'm Lauren Gambino here for The Daily Quirk with Autumn, Risa, and Hal Lublin of Thrilling Adventure Hour. Good morning, guys. How are you doing? Great. Can, uh, can we start out by talking about how each of you became involved with The Thil Thrilling Adventure Hour? Sure. Uh, I was uh, a graduate of Second City, Los Angeles, and performing there. And uh, Ben Acker was in a sketch group with me, along with Annie Savage and Mark Gagliardi, and my future wife, oddly enough. Um, it's true. I didn't know that. This is true. Um, and around the time the show started, which was March of 2005, we were working together, and Ben would tell me about the show he was doing, I'd say, we'd love to get you in there at some point, and three months later, I was able to get in there, and they were never able to get rid of me. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. How about you, Autumn? I was friends with Annie Savage from the headshot place that she worked at, age, <laughs> for like ages ago, and um, I ran into her one night, and she was like, oh, I'm doing this really cool show, Thrilling Adventure Hour, you need to come see it, and I was like, okay, that sounds kind of cool. Went to see it, and I was like, this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. Nobody's doing anything like this, and I grew up with Prairie Home Companion, and I was like, this, okay, it's like Prairie Home Companion, but it's like kind of quirky and funny and weird and how can I possibly get involved like immediately and they were like yes please join the show so it was Annie and me and Paget, and um, we performed at Embar for a while and that was what eight for me it was like eight eight and a half years ago Wow yeah. awesome so can you tell us a bit about the roles that you play for Thrilling Adventure Hour we'll start with you Autumn I play Amelia Earhart, Fearless Flyer. Amelia Earhart disappeared in the 30s to fight crime throughout time for the United States, mostly Nazis. <laughs> and you also have a role in that segment as well. You play Newsreel Hal. Can you yes. tell us about that? Uh, so I narrate all the different segments, and that's a deep cut because in the script, they write my name with some description behind mm -hmm. it. So Newsreel is the Amelia, <laughs> and then there's Folksy Hal, Spooky Hal. This heroic howl. What did you get last night? Willy Wonka howl? There was a Willy Wonka howl. <laughs> Willy Wonka howl last that night. That was amazing, by the way. Um, so I narrate all these pieces, and then I also play uh, Gummy in a segment called Moonshine Holler, and I play a character named Philip Fathom, the deep sea detective, in a superhero segment called Captain Laserbeam. So I'm, you know, just filling in bits and pieces there, utility guy. So how do you come up with the inspiration for the voices behind each of your characters? Oh my, I mean, usually it's pretty, a voice jumps into your head when you're reading a character. Um, sometimes, you know, I'll come up with something completely different from what they had in mind and then you adjust. But I think all of our, one of our, we all come from improv, so one of our favorite things to do is adjust at the last minute, mm -hmm. um, which we do a lot of. <laughs> so it's really, and when you're working with people, you'll kind of go, okay, well, you're doing this voice, so I need to do a voice that's a little lighter instead of heavier. And um, you just work together and we've all been working together for so long that we really trust each other and um, it's just it's fun yeah I mean a, a lot of it's playing against expectations of what the character is supposed to be um, for all the narrators that are based on specific characters um, spooky hell probably is the easiest one it's the ghost host from the haunted mansion mm -hmm. one of my first voiceover jobs was doing a voice match for him for Disney and they had to pitch my voice. I mean, it was, I spent like two months preparing for I didn't it. Know this so, since I have that voice, it just made sense that that would be the voice that would introduce a ghost segment, mm -hmm. just as an example. <laughs> and you do so many different segments back to back as the narrator. How is it difficult to get into the different types of roles for that, preparing those voices? At this point, I've done it enough that it's comfortable. I think earlier on it was about tr sort of remembering what I'd done before. The the folksy one that introduces Sparks Nevada has probably changed the most. Okay. Um, so that was like, this doesn't feel right, and then I just settled into what was originally supposed to be Sam Elliott, and now it's just <laughs> a raspy, yelling, <laughs> western guy. That's awesome. What roles over the years have been some of your favorites to perform? Um, I got to play Bloody Mary in Beyond. I usually like these characters that I get to bring into Beyond Belief is really fun because that's where I get to be a utility player and it's always fun. Bloody Mary, she was basically like a, um, a bored party girl turned stay-at-home mom. <laughs> um, so, uh, who was a drunk, of course, which is why she got along great with Sadie and, uh, and Paul. So, um, or Sadie and Frank. And then last, I really liked Hucklebuckle Bright last oh, night. Hucklebuckle, Hucklebuckle, so whatever funny. her name is. Hucklebuckle <laughs> Bright, because she's so basically great. Rainbow Bright yes. on acid. <laughs> <laughs> and how about you, Hal? Who, would, who has been some of your favorite characters? Um, I have played adventure Kateer named William that's always fun to play because it's actually based on old neighbors of Ben Blackers. 
and these two brothers that would just go, take out the trash. Why don't you take out the trash? And they would yell at each other <laughs> really loud. So Ben wrote that into a show as a surprise for his wife. And the first time we did it at, at, at M Bar, like there was some crowd reaction, but you could hear his wife, Julie, in the back just like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> so that's always a fun character to play. That's so great. And how has it been like being here for New York Super Week for Thrilling Adventure Hour, now going off to Comic-Con, and being able to perform for your East Coast fans? It's so much fun when we get to take the show on the road because people, it, it's an event for people. They've been waiting for it, and when you walk on stage, you can feel that, whatever that sort of tingle is, and everyone's so excited to be there, and um, they're just, they're great audiences to perform for. Yeah, I mean, New York's become like a second home kind of, and the fans are so smart, and they're so excited to have the show uh, performed for them, as excited as we are to perform it for them. So that's always great. And then the Comic-Con crowd as well. I mean, we've done a fair number of cons this year, and it's it's always interesting to be in in like a thousand different cultures at once and be able to introduce people to the show. Um, it's just like, great to get to do stuff like this. Spread the word. That's right. So where can fans see you guys next? I do know we're going to Australia and New Zealand in May. It's amazing. Yeah, so if you're from there, we'll be there. <laughs> yeah, and uh, still doing the show in Los Angeles. I think we have some other road stuff that's going to be announced pretty soon. But uh, we could just show up at your house. <laughs> That would be great. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to that. Yeah, we're like we're like the Bill Murray of podcasts. You never know when we're going to show up. You'll never be able to tell the story. No one will believe you. That's great. And you have such a devoted fan base. Is there anything you would like to say to them right now? Oh, that's the sweetest. Um, <laughs> hi. <laughs> um, thanks for being supportive. Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, thank you. We wouldn't be here doing this if it wasn't for you guys. Yeah. You've I mean, taking a small show in a supper club with a hundred people and made it something that's heard around the world and seen around the country, and we just couldn't be more grateful. I just found out that we were, were number three comedy podcast on iTunes. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know. Amazing. That's so cool. <laughs> Thank you. You guys did that. Yeah. You did. You did. Both of you. And you too. Sorry, you, I didn't mean to leave you out. You did some. Not as much. But you too. Not as much. Did the most. We know. Oh, well, Autumn and Hal, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. Enjoy the rest of the day at Comic-Con. Thank you. Thank you.